This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I am so excited for our story that I'm just going to get right to... Huh? Who could that be? I'll be right back. This will just take a minute. Hi, can I help you? Oh, okay. Uh, you can leave it right... Wait, that must be a mistake. I'm sure I didn't order anything like that. Hmm. I really can't... Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, couldn't you just... Okay. Thank you. You too. Well, this is a first. That was a delivery. And not just any delivery... It wasn't a normal delivery you'd expect to show up at a podcast studio, like a new microphone or a bag of decorative gravel or a rake for a zen garden. It was something else. Something I definitely did not order and something I do not want in my studio for perfectly understandable reasons. It's an enormous ant farm. Whatever size ant farm you are imagining right now, double it. Triple it. This thing is gigantic, and it is now literally right next to me in my tiny little studio, forcing me to push in my hard metal stool as far as it will go. I don't have room for this. I already have my tower of breakable plates the remains of my antique teacup collection, my hall of mirrors, the wind chimes I have to make sure to keep still when I record my stories. I cannot fit an oversized ant farm teeming with ants. And I would never order this. I can't even think who would have... Oh, I have a new email. Hmm. It's from the Studio Spiders. Dear Rhea, please make sure you do not scratch the glass of our new ant farm with your fingernails. What? My fingernails are very normal and could never scratch glass. And secondly, why did you order this ant farm? That is downright sinister. That's it. I'm selling this ant farm. I'm also putting my email notifications on silent. Let me just make a quick post to get rid of this thing. Brand new, never before used ant farm. The perfect gift or a great addition to your vacation home. There we go. (sighs) Well, I'm not going to be able to get rid of it in the next 30 minutes, so I guess I'll just get on with the story. It is a little strange telling a story while pressed up against the glass of a gigantic ant farm brimming with ants, but when you are a storyteller, this is just the kind of thing you have to deal with. Let's get to our story. It's called Little Hedgehog Goes Apple Picking. Take it away, Sophia. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine them in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go! It was one o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday in early fall when Mr. Hedgehog woke up out of a dream, sat up in bed, and murmured, Apple cricket muffins, with a dreamy look on his face. His eyes fluttered open blinking against the sunshine coming in his window. The dreamy look on his face vanished as he realized there were no apple cricket muffins. It had been yet another dream. Lately, Mr. Hedgehog could not get apple cricket muffins out of his mind, specifically his Nana's famous apple cricket muffins. When he was a tiny hedgehog, she'd make them just for him every time he visited her. They were so good. Made with fresh apples. They must be freshly picked. I picked these apples today in broad daylight. 
when I should have been sleeping. Fresh crickets, of course. Caught them myself. One gave me quite the run around, I'll tell you that. And a variety of flavorful spices. Just the tiniest pinch of cardamom, my dear. Sitting up in bed, blinking against the harsh afternoon light. Mr. Hedgehog decided then and there he was done dreaming about apple cricket muffins. It was time to bake them himself. He shuffled into his tiny prickly daughter's bedroom in the middle of their underground burrow within a great forest teeming with life. Sunlight poured through the little round window in Little Hedgehog's room, where she and Bibi, her best friend of all time, were asleep on the burrow floor. Little Guy, the chameleon who lived in a leaf-filled enclosure in the corner of Little Hedgehog's room, perched on a branch and fixed one big eye on Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog was just about to wake Little Hedgehog and Bibi when he heard, She told me I could have five buckets of root vegetable lollipops, and I said three was fine. Mr. Hedgehog stopped short, a smile crossing his face. He paused a moment, then opened his mouth to speak. But then he heard three buckets should be more than sufficient. My mom says one should never have more than 38 fruit vegetable lollipops in a sitting. Okay. Mr. Hedgehog blinked. He crept closer to check that Little Hedgehog and Bibi were, in fact, asleep. He leaned over Little Hedgehog so that their noses were nearly touching. All of a sudden, she sat up in bed, yum, and smacked right into her dad. He put a paw to his aching head. Oh, sorry, Dad. It's fine. Dad, it's so early. What are you doing up? Little Hedgehog asked, blinking against the sunlight. Bibi sat up next, shielding her eyes with a paw. Good afternoon, Mr. Hedgehog. To what do we owe the pleasure? Hey, B.B., I'll uh, get to that, but first, I heard you both sleep-talking. Little Hedgehog and B.B. giggled. We were dreaming, Mr. Hedgehog. Just dreaming, Dad. You were dreaming together? About root vegetable lollipops. Root vegetable lollipops, Mr. Hedgehog. Okay, uh, look, I'm here because we are going apple-picking. We haven't seen Nana Hedgehog in a few weeks, and I thought we could make some apple cricket muffins for her, just like she did for me when I was a young hedgehog. Little Hedgehog's and Bibi's eyes grew wide. (gasps) A visit to Great Nana? Little Hedgehog's Nana Hedgehog is superlative in every way, in my opinion. And apple picking? Mr. Hedgehog, we are going to travel to an apple orchard and select our own apples with which to bake delicious treats. That's right. And it's no fun to go to the apple orchard at night. I figured (sighs) we'd get up early and get there while the sun is up. Yay! 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 The third yay came from Little Guy who stared down at them with big eyes from his leafy perch. Oh, little guy, you're up! Good afternoon, little guy. Little guy's only word was yay, so he just smiled. Dad, can we bring little guy? Please, can we bring him? Please, can we bring him? If he wants to come, sure, why not? The three of them scampered through the daytime forest on their way to the apple orchard, Mr. Hedgehog pushed an empty wheelbarrow. Bibi held a homemade walking stick with one paw, and a little hedgehog scampered along with her chameleon, Little Guy, perched on her shoulder prickles. So if I understand you correctly, Mr. Hedgehog, you are saying that you wish to recreate the magic of your beloved Nana's apple cricket muffins in order to both have a delicious treat but also to address the cloying nostalgia of your lost youth. 
I wouldn't put it that way, but, well, I just can't stop thinking about those muffins. Nana Hedgehog used to make them for me every time I visited her burrow. That's so sweet, Dad. Heartwarming. As nocturnal creatures, they were not used to being out in the bright sun of the afternoon, and they took in the sights as they went. There was a creek burbling over rocks, complete with frogs perched upon the biggest boulders. There was a sail squirrel giving a presentation to a group of other squirrels about the luxuries of houseboat living. Personally, I rent mine out for three months out of the year. Lots of squirrels keep their trees, too. Can you grow a tree on a houseboat? I'd have a hard time without any trees at all. Sure, yeah, I know a guy who grew a tree right out of the deck of his houseboat. He loves it. Although you do run the risk of... And there were three cows in a nearby tree. Oops, I mean, there were three crows in a nearby tree. That's better. Eventually, the trail, once dense with trees and shrubs crowding the path, opened up and widened. A few more steps and the trail turned into a gravelly path leading to what looked like an endless orchard of apple trees, extending in all directions. Wow! Whoa. It's different during the day, right? It was. They'd traveled there a few times before during the night, and it was always quiet. They'd seen a few possums and some scavenging raccoons and mice, But nocturnal creatures tended to be quiet and quick in their work, focused on getting food efficiently and then going home. Daytime creatures, not so much. They took in the festive atmosphere. First, they stopped at a tree branch where a worm was giving demonstrations on how to best tunnel through an apple. Several other worms rested nearby, nodding as they listened. It's important to select the correct apple. You don't want to just tunnel through any old apple. Well, actually, you do want a bit of an old apple, since they're easier to deal with. If it's not ripe enough, it will be a strenuous journey, and you'll lack the energy you need to get through the entire thing in one go. It's a good point. My cousin had that problem. In fact, he's been living inside a crisp Fuji apple for the last week because he needed a rest. Little Hedgehog and BB smiled and continued on. Next, they stopped at a table where a tall squirrel was handing out apple samples on toothpicks. Hello, would you like to try some of the species we've got in the orchard? Of course. Yes, please. All right, uh, we've got some Honeycrisp here. Granny Smith there. Oh, these are red delicious and they do live up to their name. Little Hedgehog and BB tried each one. Mmm. Yum. Um, excuse me? Said a chipmunk who appeared beside them. Yes? May I interest you in a sample of a gala apple? Do you have any pineapple? The sample squirrel blinked. No. Little Hedgehog and BB giggled, then scampered on, taking in the sights. Oh, look, BB, there's a toss the apple contest. Let us investigate. They scampered towards a small hedgehog in a corduroy suit, next to the toss the apple sign. Hey, kids, step right up for Toss the Apple. Just take an apple and see how far you can throw it. Easy peasy. The hedgehog hit a button on a tiny music player. Toss the apple, toss, toss the apple. How far can you make it go? Is it one, is it two, is it 3,000 feet? How far can that apple go? Eh, that song needs work. All right, all right, let's see how far you can toss the apple. Little Hedgehog stepped up first. She gathered a large apple in her paws. 
She stepped behind the line drawn in the ground. You've got this, little hedgehog. Little Hedgehog smiled, and her eyes twinkled. She lifted the apple above her head and heaved it forward. Mm. It soared through the air, about eight inches. It fell to the ground, bounced once, and came to a rest about a foot and a half from the starting line. Pretty good, huh, BB? Seems so to me. Uh, yeah, kid. Uh, great job. All right, next. BB stepped forward. She selected a round Macintosh apple, took her position at the line, and without any hesitation at all, began spinning in a circle. Little hedgehogs and little guy's eyes went wide as they watched BB spin. Finally, after what seemed like enough spinning to make anyone ill, BB hurled the apple from her paws with remarkable force. It went flying through the air and went a good four feet, then bounced further. Wow, BB, Little Hedgehog said. From her shoulder, Little Guy said nothing, but his big eyes twinkled with admiration. That was, uh, that was pretty good, kid. You get a prize. Here you go. The corduroy-suited hedgehog muttered and handed BB a shiny red apple. Thank you. My great-great-great-grandfather was known for his ability to toss a grapefruit. He was the reigning grapefruit-throwing champion for five years straight. The hedgehog in the corduroy suit peered at BB with a curious smile. Yeah, okay, kid. All right, who's next? Step right up and toss the apple. They continued on. Toss the apple, toss, toss the apple. How far can It was get? getting late in the afternoon, and they still hadn't picked a single apple. Little Hedgehog and BB wandered through the rows of trees until they located Mr. Hedgehog. He was standing, paws crossed over his chest, staring up at a spider's web glistening in the sun. Beautiful, isn't it? He murmured. His tiny daughter and her best friend looked up at it and saw the way the threads of the web caught the late afternoon light. Lovely, Dad. It occurs to me now, Mr. Hedgehog, that perhaps we appreciate the profound beauty of sunlight because, as nocturnal creatures, we see little of it. If every day we saw the glisten of a spider's web or the sparkle of fresh dew on grass, would we admire it? Would we even notice it? Or would we overlook it as too commonplace to be remarked upon? It's a fair question, BB. But the sunlight, as enchanting as it was, would not last forever. The sun was dropping in the sky, and soon it would be dusk. It was time to get down to apple picking. They went about filling their wheelbarrow with as many apples as they could reach. As Little Hedgehog plucked a bright red apple, and went to toss it into the wheelbarrow, she heard tunneling, 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 tunneling. Little Hedgehog spun the apple in her paws until she saw the opening to a tunnel and a worm at the center. Oh, hello. Hi. I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. It's fine. It would have been difficult to see me. What with how far I've gotten. Impressive, BB said, peering over Little Hedgehog's shoulder prickles to get a look. Little Guy peered down from Little Hedgehog's other shoulder. Would you like to hear a poem? Of course. Certainly. Apple. Apple. Apple tree. Apple. Sun. Shining. Rain, droplating, flowers, blooming, bumblebees, visiting, fruit, ripening, worm, tunneling, apple, apple, 
Apple tree, apple. Little Hedgehog and BB waited, smiling and blinking. That was all. Oh, okay. Best of luck to you with your eating and your poetry. Little Hedgehog placed the apple on the ground at the foot of the tree. As the sun dropped behind the trees, Mr. Hedgehog dropped the last apple in the wheelbarrow. That seems like more than enough. Little Guy yawned from Little Hedgehog's shoulder. The three hedgehogs scampered through the forest beneath the moon. Everything was different at night. The day creatures had gone home taking with them their dance parties, their music, their frolicking. Now the night creatures reigned, quietly creeping through the forest. An owl hooted from nearby. A coyote howled in the distance. But most of the nocturnal creatures were silent, like the family of possums that slipped across the path the spiders silently building new webs, the moths fluttering towards the moon's glow. Back at the burrow, Little Hedgehog returned a little guy to the branch in his enclosure. He'd fallen asleep on the way home, and she made sure not to wake him up. It was time to make apple cricket muffins. Mr. Hedgehog retrieved the paw-written recipe Nana Hedgehog had given him long ago. All right, we've got our apples. Uh, we need some honey. Got it. Got it. A pinch of cardamom. Here it is, Dad. And, oh, wait. We also need nine crickets. Little Hedgehog and BB exchanged a look. We forgot the crickets. Oh, no. We forgot the crickets. Distressingly, they'd forgotten to catch crickets. Don't worry, Dad. We'll take care of it. We shall return with precisely nine crickets, Mr. Hedgehog. All right. Mr. Hedgehog settled into a comfortable chair with a cup of steaming hot tea while little Hedgehog and BB dashed outside. Mr. Hedgehog yawned. It had been a long day. He wasn't used to all the daytime creatures and their boisterousness. It was relaxing to have a few minutes of complete silence. To give his mind a chance to... We come bearing crickets, Dad! Nine crickets for your muffin-baking endeavors, Mr. Hedgehog. Oh, great! As soon as Little Hedgehog set down the jar of crickets, she exclaimed, Phoebe, I forgot our aprons! Unacceptable. Little Hedgehog scampered to her closet and rifled through it. Oops! Mr. Hedgehog and BB exchanged a look, but said nothing. Little Hedgehog returned, holding two tiny aprons that BB's mom had made for them a few years back. Little Hedgehog tied one around her midsection. Across the front, it read, Don't be afraid to take whisks. BB donned her own apron. It said, Please remain calm. Mr. Hedgehog smiled as he looked from his little daughter to her best friend. He would make sure little Hedgehog cleaned up the disarray from her closet at some point. For now, it was time to bake muffins. Stir the batter at least 58, but no more than 71 times. That's my Nana Hedgehog voice, little hedgehog. <laughs> oh, okay. When you sprinkle the pinch of cardamom, make sure to imagine it is magical dust. Is that written on the recipe, BB? It is. Okay. As they worked, Mr. Hedgehog fell asleep in his comfortable chair with a book open on his lap. He slipped into a dream. Come in, my dear. You are nearly a minute late. A minute late for what, Nana? For jumping on the trampolines, of course. Are those apple cricket muffin trampolines? I made them myself. 
jump away. Oh, wait, where are your grippy socks? My grippy socks? Yes, my dear, you must have special grippy socks in order to leap upon the apple cricket muffin trampolines. Oh, oh no, can I bring my own grippy socks? Oh no, my dear, never. Here, I knitted you these special grippy socks. Here you are. Thank you, Nana. Now jump and nibble, my darling. Mr. Hedgehog stirred at the sound of the oven dinging. Ding, ding, ding. He was still half asleep when... Oh, Dad! Mr. Hedgehog, it is the appointed hour at which we shall visit Nana Hedgehog with our delectable treats. Huh? Grippy socks? What? Mr. Hedgehog sat up in his chair. His prickles were must, and he spent a moment flattening them into place. He peered at his daughter and her best friend. Little Hedgehog and Bibi were smiling prickle to prickle. They also held a plate towering with a pyramid of apple cricket muffins, balancing it between them. The aroma of the muffins drifted to Mr. Hedgehog's nose, bringing him right back to his childhood. Wow, nice job, you two. The two tiny hedgehogs decided not to inquire about the grippy socks comment. It was time to visit Nana Hedgehog. The forest was completely dark when they scampered outside. The moon was a curl of white gold in the navy blue. Bibi held a lantern to light the trail. Mr. Hedgehog pulled a wagon filled with muffins. Little Hedgehog skipped along beside them, imagining. Finally, they reached the familiar red door that led to Nana Hedgehog's burrow. There was a paw-written sign taped to it. B.B. read it aloud. Dear all who venture to my door, with kind hearts and prickles galore, know that I am deep in search for a lost lens. So come in, come in, be prickled friends. Be at home in my modest abode as I search for my lens, last seen upon a toad. Little Hedgehog and Bibi exchanged a look and grinned prickle to prickle. What does that mean, Dad? What does she mean by lost lens, Mr. Hedgehog? Honestly, I don't know, but this is pretty standard for Nana Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog left the muffin-filled wagon on the front stoop, and the three of them slipped inside the little red door. Inside, Nana Hedgehog's burrow was cozy and bright. On her wooden table, a candle flickered, wafting a vanilla cinnamon scent around the house. They heard Nana Hedgehog bustling about in the other room. It must be back here somewhere. Let me just... Mr. Hedgehog winced, and Little Hedgehog and Bibi stifled a chuckle. A moment later, Nana Hedgehog appeared in the doorway and startled at the sight of them. What a delightful surprise! She said, beaming. Nana Hedgehog wore a sparkly gold sequined vest and tiny clackety shoes on her feet. She looked from Hedgehog to Hedgehog in her living room, and her eyes sparkled with delight. She scampered right to them, hugging little Hedgehog first. Oh, I remember when you were the size of a honey throat lozenge. Then Mr. Hedgehog. Not working too hard, I hope. Then B.B. My goodness, your prickles are sharper every time I see you. Thank you. When Nana Hedgehog pulled away, they understood the meaning of her poem. She smiled and blinked behind her enormous glasses. 
One of the lenses was missing. We see you have lost a lens. I have, and I can't seem to locate it. But it's a fun mystery, I'll admit. Bibi bent to the ground and picked up something in her paw. Is this your lost lens? Wow, Bibi! Nana Hedgehog's eyes went wide with delight. I must have looked there 23 times. That is precisely where the toad was standing. Hmm. Bibi, you need to visit more often. Bibi smiled. Nana Hedgehog took the lens and popped it back into her glasses. Now then, to what do I owe the pleasure of your unannounced visit? Well, Mr. Hedgehog began. Wait, wait, let me guess. Okay. It's more exciting this way. Nana Hedgehog closed her eyes for a beat, thinking, then burst them open and clapped her tiny paws together. You have come to perform a reenactment of the famous debate between Sir Vonson Tippendorf and Lady Wims Patrick Milk Toast on the topic of whether a piano should be installed at the top of the old sycamore tree. No. I would like to do that in the future, though. You have come to borrow a book from my collection of insect encyclopedias, perhaps volume 27, which features insects that resemble leaves. No. I would like to do that in the future, though. Mr. Hedgehog smiled. All right, allow me one final guess. Nana Hedgehog said, her eyes bright. You are here because you are sweet darlings and you wanted to visit your dear Nana Hedgehog. Yes, that is true. Of course. And also, we brought you delicious apple cricket muffins. Mr. Hedgehog went to the door and wheeled in the wagon towered high with muffins. Oh, my dears, Nana Hedgehog said, clasping her paws together. They spent the rest of the night at Nana Hedgehog's burrow. The apple cricket muffins were delicious, of course. Nana played them her favorite records. BB perused volume 27 of the Insect Encyclopedia. Her favorite page featured ghost mantises. The four hedgehogs sipped tea and laughed about the goings-on in the forest. All was as it should be. Oh, that's the door. Hold on, I'll be right back. Hello? Oh, hi, yes, it's right here. Do you have a cart or something? Oh, okay. Sure, yeah, that's fine. I can help you move it. Huh. <sighs> Glad I've been doing all that weightlifting lately. Well, I am happy to report the ant farm is gone. I got a message right after I posted it for sale. Apparently, this guy was looking for an ant farm just like this one. What a relief. And I hope you loved the story. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter K., runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to my Little Stories premium subscribers who are making it possible for me to continue sharing my stories with children around the world. If you'd like to get more of the stories you love, an ad-free listening experience, and access to Little Stories for Sleep, an exclusive bedtime podcast, you can sign up at littlestoriespremium.com. Thank you to Sophia for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to the many premium subscribers who supplied sound effects used in this story. Thank you to Charlotte, Troy, Lenora, Roxy, Alma, Penina, Eloise, Lottie, Nolan, Morgan, Malcolm, Ramona, Chloe, Sadie, Arden, Marin, Kale, and Ava. And thank you, as always, for listening in.